Good morning, church family. I wish y'all could see the view that I see from right now. You all look beautiful. It's so exciting to just to hear what we just sing in the heroes, how powerful those two words are. When he rose, he took on our sin. And because he did that, this is why we celebrate this great resurrection Sunday. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anyone there, you can go ahead and let them in at this time. So that's why we celebrate this day. We were in a dead situation, but he rose. <laughs> Let's go to God in prayer. All wise, everlasting God. This once more and again, we call on your holy, divine, and righteous name. First, just want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are, oh God. You are a awesome wonder, Lord. Who looks high, who sits high and looks low and loves his children, Lord. And for that, we say hallelujah and we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we say thank you, Lord, for allowing us the opportunity to wake up again this morning, Lord. By you touching us with a finger of your love, Lord. Knowing that you didn't have to do it, but you were so graceful and so merciful to us that you allowed us to see another day, Lord. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, you've been good. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, God. Lord, when we told us to walk right, we went left. You still showed grace and mercy to us, Lord. Lord, we say thank you for that. Lord, on this day, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Our awesome lamb that you sent your only begotten son, Lord. When it should have been us on that rugged cross, Lord. But you took on our sin, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. But Lord, we say thank you again because we know that's not how the story ended, God. Yes, it was dark on Friday. Looked like a grim situation. But thank you, God, for Sunday morning that you got up with all power in your hand, Lord. And for that, Lord, when everyone is anyone that's sick and going through, just know that your healing can be resurrected also. Lord, just know that if your finances are challenging at this time, those can be resurrected also. Because God has all power in his hand. Lean not on your own understanding. But in all that way, is trust and acknowledge you. And you will direct our path, O oh God. Lord God, we ask that you just touch those that are behind prison bars right now, Lord. Yes, they may be incarcerated in body, but they can still call on you, Lord, and be set free in spirit. And Lord, we ask that you just touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Those that are in the hospital beds right now, they can't move, Lord. They don't have the activity of their limbs, Lord. We know that you have healing power, Lord. So right now in the name of Jesus, we declare and decree healing upon their bodies, oh God. And Lord, we ask that you just bless our families right now in the name of Jesus. Bless our children and our youth, Lord. Lord, we ask that you to continue to guide them and walk with them and show them the way, Lord. Let them know that the wages of sin is death, but by you, God, the gift of love from you, oh Lord, is everlasting life. Now, Lord, we ask that you just bless our pastor right now in the name of Jesus. Touch him and his spouse and his daughter, Lord. Our first family, Lord. Give him preaching power on high, Lord. Let him declare the word easily, Lord, that we understand it and we walk better in our life day to day. Now, Lord, as we close this prayer, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you again for Jesus, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask that you just keep us and love us and just help us to be um, better and walk with you, oh God. These now bless we ask your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Come on, give God some praise if you know there's power in the blood of the Lamb. This is the day that the Lord has made, and of all days we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me on a resurrection Sunday, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the number one more time? One more Easter, one more resurrection Sunday. The old folks said he didn't have to do it. Oh, but thank God that he did. Hallelujah. We preach it this morning. In that name that's above every other name. They name our risen Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And truly we are so glad to see so many faces in the building. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our ushers and our safety team and those who work during the week preparing our staff and our volunteers preparing the uh, the sanctuary, we do have a few seats, and so uh, I don't think I have to say it, but I will anyway, as you know, we have a beautiful purse, amen, but the, the floor is anointed, amen, I prayed over this carpet before they put it down, so it's all right, it's an anointed floor, so we thank God for all of you. Want to move on real quick? I'm ready to worship. Can we bless God for this choir? Amen. Singing the hymns of yesterday, and we thank God for them. And thank God for our ministers and deacons, deacons' wise ministry, these wonderful ushers who are working very hard to make sure that all of you are comfortable, and we appreciate uh, their labor of love. And to the angels and armor bearers, this AV ministry, doing a great job as always. Those that are joining us via streaming, we thank the Lord for you on this Sunday morning. Every visitor, we welcome you. Uh, we're not going to ask you to say an Easter speech, but if you're a first-time visitor, we would like you to stand, and we can welcome you here at Bethlehem this morning with a hand of love, hand of appreciation, hand of welcome to Bethlehem. We are so thankful, so grateful that you chose to worship with us here at Bethlehem on this uh, Easter Sunday morning. We certainly want to thank those in our youth ministry who worked so hard yesterday with our kids. We appreciate them. It was an outstanding event. Thank you so very much. And those who worked this morning. Can we give our culinary ministry a big hand? Amen. Amen. We thank God for Panetta planning with, the, with Johnny and Taste of Home culinary the, the set up with the deacons particularly. Uh, Deacon Earl and Deacon Douglas, they've been working uh, almost around the clock all week, and some of the others as well, our volunteers. It's been a lot of hard work for this moment to make sure you feel at home here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. I want to thank you. Thank those who went with uh, us to Tabernacle on Friday for the seven last words, and I appreciate seeing your face in the building. It made me feel a little more at home. Amen. Seeing all of you. Now, we do ask for... Uh, as many men and women, uh, particularly our brothers, on tomorrow morning, uh, we need to put up all the tables and chairs from breakfast. So anybody that can, amen. We need everybody that can. If they can't lift, you can sweep. I don't know. You can, it's something we can do. We can take up the tablecloths. There's a lot of work we uh, need to do to get the building back in order. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, uh, we're going to meet in the fellowship hall. And we're going to, if you can't make it at 9, come at 10. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it might be a little early. Uh, we have uh, elected a new vice chairman of the deacon ministry, and we're pleased to announce our vice chair, Deacon Tim Drummond. He's somewhere in the building. Amen. He's up in the balcony. Amen. He's up in the balcony. Amen. We thank God for him and his wife, Sister Drummond, Angela Drummond. And we have a new secretary of our deacon ministry, Deacon Jovan Dungey. Amen. Amen. He's here somewhere. Over in the corner, his wife, Janika, we thank God for her. And we want to pray for them in this new position. Anytime you take a position in the Lord's house, the enemy puts a target on your back, but no weapon formed. I want to get in my sermon, but no weapon formed is going to prosper against you. Amen. So I want to pray for them and encourage them in this new role. Uh, I want to thank you for your giving. Amen. I, I pray that all of your money didn't go to the, the 
online to Amazon or wherever you got all these beautiful outfits from. <laughs> Amen. And the Easter baskets for the kids because it's still about serving God. Yeah. Now, I've never been one to labor over giving, but now, some of us have gotten a little slack the last couple of weeks. I don't want you to think we got it like that. Amen. We got bills like that. Amen. Somebody made a song for not long ago that said, bills, bills, bills. I, and uh, we have a lot. Amen. I told you we've already ordered brand new chairs. We are getting quotes now for the, to restrike the parking lot. Amen. Yeah, I'm glad you're clapping. Keep them hands warm. So when you go online on your device, because it's, it's getting close to six figures. Amen. Just give your one or two. We'll, we'll round God around out the river. Do your part. Amen. Do your part. But we need you to give. I know that's an old cliche about the building fund, and you don't see a building. Well, you can't say that at Bethlehem. And when you pull up on the parking lot, you see building and more buildings and more buildings. And you look around this building. They didn't do this for a sermon. They did all this for a dollar. Amen. So you see the work the Lord is doing here in this ministry. I could talk a lot, but I'm going to move on. Um, I do thank you for your giving. Let us bow and ask God to bless our giving right now. Lord, we thank you because you gave to us. First, you gave your only begotten son, but you also gave us material blessings. Now, God, help us to grow spiritually. Realize that we can't take it with us and that when we release ourselves to give to you, you multiply and return it back to us in so many ways. God, we have those of us who have stewardship given by this church and most of all by you. Give us wisdom, discipline, integrity, and discernment. We might make right decisions and be found to be faithful stewards over that which you have given us. We'll be ever careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all the saints of God said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Bethlehem today is coming now. Good morning, and welcome to this Resurrection Sunday of March, the 31st day. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Philip M. Baldwin, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday, and welcome to all that are worshiping here with the Bethlehem Baptist Church, wherever you may be. Bethlehem, this coming week marks the return of Wednesday in the Word. You can attend in person or on Zoom at 12 noon or 7 p.m. The return of Wednesday in the Word is this week, April 3rd. For this Resurrection Sunday, Pastor Baldwin's message is entitled, It Didn't Work. Reading scripture from the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter, the 62nd through the 66th verses. After another song of worship from the BBC Dynamic Hymn Choir, and great job by the way guys, sit up and pay attention so that your heart can receive this Resurrection Sunday morning spoken word of God coming from our pastor, Dr. Philip M. Baldwin. I didn't have much to share, but before I leave you, Bethlehem today wants you to know that I thought about all of our kids today. Well, maybe some of you adults too. Not because you get to celebrate the Easter holiday, but because today is National Crayon Day. Did you know that it is still to this day not known who actually invented the first crayon? But a company by the name of Benny and Smith produced such products as paint, pigments, and slate pencils for schools. Well. In the year of 1903, Benny and Smith created the Crayola Division and for the first time started producing colored wax crayons for children. Since the beginning of crayons, Crayola has produced more than 200 different colors of the crayons, but now the largest box on sale is the Crayola Ultimate Crayon Box Collection and it has over 152 different crayon colors in it. Also, did you know this? 
Crayola is now based in Eastern Pennsylvania, and they produce some 3 billion crayons every year. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the world's largest crayon is based in Jamaica, New York, and it's the color blue. It's more than 17 feet long, more than one foot wide, and it weighs 1,352 pounds. In March of 2017, Crayola had announced that they were getting rid of one of their classic colors in order to make room for the new shade of blue. They had over 90,000 submissions of a name in which five were chosen for people to vote on. After more than two months of voting by the public, the name that won had over 400,000 votes. Guess what they named it? They named it Blutiful for its blue color. It's National Crayon Day. One more thing. Today is also National Tater Day. So I have me some fresh hot french fried taters right here. That's pretty good. That's all I have for Bethlehem today. Let's continue on now with this Resurrection Sunday morning service. He got up. The tomb is empty. Our Redeemer lives. God bless. I'll see you next week.
Someone have lost your keys as I have an Audi. Amen. So Brother Colbert will have the keys or he'll have your car, whichever one. <laughs> He's shouting, I know he got a new car, so let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this worship experience. And now we ask that you will take us out of self. Use us to your glory and help us to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us. And Lord, bless your people. One by one and name by name, open their hearts, their minds, and their spirits that they will be fertile ground for the seed of your word. Now, We believe and we see that the word will bring forth a rich harvest. But any way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. We'll take no credit. Give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, beginning with the 62nd verse. Matthew 27. Verse 62 for the New King James Version of the Bible. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and said to the people, he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way. 
make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. A useful thought this morning, it didn't work. It didn't work. A few talking points we desire to bring out of the text this morning. First one is that the Bible never said that the enemy would not attempt to steal, kill, or destroy you. The second point that we desire to make is the enemy has always wanted to stop the redeeming work of Christ. Number three, the enemy was more afraid of Jesus getting out than he was him getting up. And lastly, it didn't work. The Bible never tells us that the enemy will not try to steal, kill, and destroy. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that's why the devil has come. He might steal, kill, and destroy. The setting is actually the crucifixion has taken place. Jesus has been crucified. The resurrection started actually, according to Mark, at 9 a.m. in the morning when they lifted that cross with a pulley action and let it fall into the ground. And there he is, the Son of God, standing before the world, nails in his hand, nails in his feet, crown of thorn on his head and for six hours he stayed right there on that cross six hours he heard the crowd jeering him six hours he heard the thief on the left reviling him six hours he saw his mother crying before him finally after saying the seven last words that he said he finally said it is finished it is complete Jesus, around 3 o'clock, died. The Bible says about noon the sun went out. The earth began to shake and rock and reel, as the old preacher said, like a drunk man. And the centurion declared this Roman soldier who did not know Jesus as Savior, but said, surely this man is the Son of God. Now he's dead, and Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, claimed and went to Pilate and uh, begged for his body because Joseph had a brand new tomb that nobody had ever used. Made it for himself. Nice tomb with a huge stone to roll away, away to the mouth of the tomb. And along with Nicodemus, the one that came by night. We remember that he came by night because we, we get on him, a bag on him for being so-called afraid. We don't really remember that Nicodemus had prepared the body of Jesus. Isn't it amazing people remember your shortcoming? But they forget about the good that you do. They can remember something you did back in 2001. But they'll forget about what you did just last month. Uh, they, people don't, under, don't remember that about Nicodemus. But Nicodemus helped prepare uh, the body of Jesus for burial. And now but he's dead. He's in Joseph's new tomb. And the Pharisees, uh, they come to Pilate and they said to him now, remember, it's amazing they remember that. They didn't remember he was the son of God, but they remember that he, they said in three days he would rise again. And you know, I want you to understand, as I said, the, the scripture uh, says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. The Bible never said there will be no weapons formed. Sometimes we jump over to the not prosper part. And we forget about the fact that the enemy will perform and form weapons to try to stop you. The scripture shows us the weapons. They organized against Jesus. Came together, Romans and Jews came together to crucify him. The Bible says that Pilate and Herod were enemies until it came time to crucify Jesus. Don't you know that folk that don't even like you will get together to tear you down? Folk that can't stand one another will unite against you when you're their enemy. It's amazing how that happened. And not only organized against Jesus, they went to Pilate and got a guard to guard the tomb. They set the Roman seal upon the stone. So if the seal was broken, they would know that somebody had been in the grave. 
So they set guards by the stone. They set the steel, the, the seal around the stone. The stone was rolled to the mouth of the tomb because they did not want Jesus to get out from the grave. Not only did they organize against Jesus, but they attacked Jesus. They said, this deceiver, I want to destroy his body and his reputation. But the enemy wants to destroy your reputation because your reputation will outlive your body. A reputation will go a mighty long way. Your reputation will go to generations and generations. The enemy wanted to destroy his reputation by saying he was a deceiver. Gave him a label. Understand this. That always remember to guard your reputation. But the enemy wants to destroy it. But I want you to know it's never too late with God. I don't care what kind of mistake you made. You can be as guilty as sin in sin. But God can turn it around. And you don't worry about your haters. They will always remind you what you used to do. But the main reputation I want to maintain is what does God have to say about it? Will God look at you one day and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. You ain't got to make a hundred. Thank God for that. Anybody here glad you ain't got to make a hundred because you know that you messed up along the way. But if you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make it rule over me. They tried to attack his character, tear down his reputation. And now, then they said because they were worried about him getting up from the grave. Now, if he's such a deceiver, what you worried about? But if maybe they saw him open the eyes of the blind and said if he can open the eyes of the blind, maybe, just maybe, he will come back from the dead. Maybe they saw him or heard about how he spoke over J. Iris, his daughter who was dead. I said to Lethai Kumai, which means little girl, get up. And the little girl got up from the dead. Maybe they saw uh, the widow of Nain with, with her only son headed to the cemetery. Jesus stopped the funeral procession, told the young man to get up. And maybe they said if he can stop that funeral procession and get that young man up from the grave, maybe, just maybe, he can get up from the grave. Maybe they heard when Jesus said, if you tear down this temple, in three days, I'll build it up again and try to act like that he was talking about their physical building. But how many of you know that the church is not the physical building? The church is on the inside of you. So at any time you say what the church ought to be doing, you got to examine yourself and say, what are you doing? Because if you are saved, if you've been born again, you are the church. So if the church ought to help poor people, you ought to help poor people. If the church ought to help the homeless, you ought to help the homeless. If the church ought to be helping people that are sick, you ought to help people that are sick. Stop looking at one or two and saying they're the church. Because we all that have been born again, let somebody that have been born again say amen. Let those that were redeemed say so. That means that you are the body of Christ. Maybe they heard Jesus say, the only sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah. They spent three days in the belly of the whale. And they said, well, he said he's going to get up three days later. And they were afraid he was going to get up. Because the enemy was always worried about the redeeming power of Jesus. You see, if Jesus simply died and stayed dead, there's no redemption in it for you and me. He was just a good man, if that was the case, that died for a good cause. But he's more than a good man that died for a cause. He's more than a prophet who died for a cause. The enemy wants to stop the redeeming work of Jesus. Because even in the wilderness, when Jesus first started his ministry and the devil showed up and said, jump from the temple, the angels will rush down and catch you. And the whole world will know that you are the son of God. Even had the audacity to quote scripture. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, Psalm, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But Jesus didn't fall for the trap. The reason was because if he had done that, yes, they would have proclaimed him the son of God. But without the redeeming work of the cross, without the blood that shall never lose his power, there'll be no remission of sin. You see, the devil knew who Jesus was. He just didn't want you to know who Jesus was. He didn't want you to get the effects of the blood of Jesus. Because without the cross, there is no blood for redemption. If there's no blood for redemption, there is no sacrifice, no crucifixion. And if there's no crucifixion, there's no resurrection. And if there's no resurrection, we don't have a reason to be here right now. But because there is a resurrection, 
because there was a crucifixion, because there was the blood that was shed. We are here right now giving God praise in the sanctuary, giving God praise on the overflow, giving God praise on the stream that because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Because he's alive, I need some folk that's alive up in here to give God some praise. Because the enemy wanted to destroy the redeeming work, but it did not work. <laughs> not only that, the enemy was more afraid of Jesus getting out than he was getting up. See, again, if he just rose from the dead, ascended back to heaven, we wouldn't be here right now. The enemy was not worried about him getting up as much as they were worried about him getting out. Because when he got out from the grave... When he rose from the grave, all of a sudden now he tells us to go and let the world know. Because if we did not know he had rose from the dead, it wouldn't do us any good. But we're here right now in the sanctuary because we know deep down in our soul that he is alive. And you know when Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he did was tell them to go. Uh, when Mary saw him, she wanted to cling and hold on to him. When she realized that was her savior, her redeemer. But Jesus said, go and tell my disciple that I've risen from the dead. Not only did he tell them when he gave the great commission after walking this earth for 40 days after his resurrection. Help me, Holy Ghost, to make it plain. Stood on a mountain, got ready to ascend to his father. He told his disciples again, all powers in my hand. And the first command of the great commission is the word go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. He tells us to go again. And even when he got ready to tell his disciples, I'm leaving you, but I'm sending a comforter called the Holy Spirit, he told them to go again. He said, because you shall be my witnesses. God needs a witness. Can I get a witness in the sanctuary? He needs a witness that will witness for him in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And here we are in 2024, celebrating what the disciples saw over 2,000 years ago. And the reason we're celebrating is because they told somebody. You ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. You ought to tell somebody that he is alive. You ought to tell somebody that he is resurrected. Because every now and then, I feel him in my spirit. I can be in this sanctuary, but I ain't worried about the crowd. But I'm like a, the woman with the issue of blood. I'm going to press my way because I come for a blessing. You're not going to stop my blessing because it's crowded in here. You're not going to stop my praise. And looking down my pew, your row at me. The more you look, the more I'm going to praise him. Because you don't know what the Lord done for me. You don't know how I could have lost my mind. You don't know how sick I was. And the Lord healed me. You don't know how broke I was. And God made a way. So excuse me if I get a little happy. As I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. God's eyes on the sparrow. And I need 15 folk in here. They can say, I know he watches over me. You ought to go and tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. They tried to stop him, but it did not work. How do I know it didn't work? Because you're here right now. That means what the devil, I'm getting ahead of myself, meant for evil, God turned it around. They rolled a stone to the mouth of the grave, trying to stop him. They tried to stop a stone with a stone. They rolled a stone over the tomb. They put a seal on the stone. They put guards by the stone but early I said early Sunday morning an angel came down and the ground shook one more time because the angel came and rolled the stone away the reason the angel rolled the stone away was not so Jesus could get out but so you and I could look in and say he's not here he's risen just like he said because that Sunday morning, the angel came down and knocked out the guards by the stone. 
broke the seal on the stone and rolled the stone away. And I heard somebody say the burdens of my heart rolled away. Because he is a stone now. He's the stone's hood from the mountain. He's the stone tested on a sure foundation. He's the stone that the builders rejected that became the chief cornerstone. He's a rock in a river land. Some I said rock of ages left for me. Let me hide myself in me. I'm so glad that we know it didn't work. How do I know that it did not work? But the angel said that the Bible declares that he's not here. Don't be afraid. I know you seek Jesus, but he's not here. For he has risen just like he said. I know it didn't work, but the Bible says early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb where the sun had risen. And they said, who will roll the stone away? They didn't know that it was already done. You can testify and celebrate that it's already done. That thing you've been praying about, it's already done. That problem that you're dealing with, it's already done. That situation that you've been praying about, it's already done. And since it's already done, you can give God some preemptive praise. You can praise Him in advance. How do I know it didn't work? But the Bible said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. How do I know that it's already done? For as Christ is not risen, our faith is in vain. But I heard Paul say, but now, but now, Christ is risen. I once was lost, but now, I once was blind, but now I'm free. It did not work. How do I know? Because what the devil meant for him, God turned it around. And I want to tell you, it did not work. And it won't work in your life. What the devil trying to do, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. So great is he that's in you. That he that's in the world, it won't work. Cause weeping may endure for a night. But joy, I said joy, comes in the morning. It won't work. Cause God got the final say. It won't work. Tell the devil what you're trying to do. It won't work. Shut it in the atmosphere. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work with my family. It won't work with my finances. It won't work with my praise. It won't work with my situation. I know you're trying to get my mind. I know you're trying to get my joy. COVID tried to take us out, but it did not work. If it did not work, you got to pray. If you know. The devil tried to kill you, but it didn't work. Give him glory if you know he set some traps, but it did not work. Give God some praise. Tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you. It did not work. Through Jesus, I feel like praising. Through Jesus, I got the victory. Look over your child and tell the devil it won't work. I know you're trying to get him, but it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. That's why you're crazy. It won't work. But the blood got power. I said the blood had power. It won't work. But the power is not free. It won't work. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. Work. Well, I got my mind stayed on Jesus. It won't work. Cause I got to go down in prayer. Say, Father, I stretch. My hands to thee. It won't work, baby. Don't you lose your joy. It won't work. Don't you lose your faith. It won't work. Don't you lose your anointing. It won't work. I 
first rodeo you got to look back over your life and remind yourself all the times the devil tried and it did not work sometimes it looked bad sometimes it looked like it was about to lose your faith but just in the nick of time God stepped in and you realize it won't work no weapon formed against you it will be formed. But that's when you got to hold on to your faith. And say, devil, it won't work. It will not prosper. Those are the church open. I'm done. You've been prayerful and patient. That choir gives us a selection. The first call is always a call to salvation. If you're not saved, what well, everything I say, none of it will apply to you. You may say, well, I've been doing pretty good. You sometimes you're selling on grandma's prayers. You're selling on mom and daddy's prayer. And you think you're getting by. But really, you're being carried. The doors of the church open. If you're led to join, praise God, this ministry, you may come by baptism, by letter, a Christian experience. Don't let the crowd stop you. All you got to say is, excuse me. I just slide right on by. Don't let you for being in the number that no man can know. I want to be in that number. This is just a small number in here. Say
excited to have you right after church. We get together with uh, Sister Madison, Sister Tanya Smith, some of our deacons. We're going through all the new member process. January with Bell's palsy and paralyzed the entire side of one side of his body and praise the Lord now he's recovering because the blood will never lose his power they tried to come against his body, but it didn't work. Praise the Lord. Pray for me. Minister Little Cheryl Smith Coleman. Oh my goodness. Cheryl Smith Coleman is about to give us our closing prayer and our benediction. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we pause to say thank you, God. God, thank you for securing our salvation, God. God, we thank you for hanging on the cross, God. God, and we thank you that you didn't just stay there, God. God, on the third day, you got all power in your name, God. So, God, we thank you for the blood that you shed, God. The blood that heals, the blood that sets free, the blood that redeems, God. So, Father, we stand here knowing that we're not deserving of your honor, God. But to look beyond our faults and see our needs. And for that, we say thank you, God. God, we lift up the people in the prayer request that have come forth, God. God, we come stand on your promises, God. You said to cast your cares on you and leave them there, God. So we stand on your promises that you can do everything but fail, God. And that your promises are still yes and amen, God. God, we come put Satan on the run, God. We know he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, we come confessing today that it won't work, God. Because we know that you're Alpha and Omega. We know that you're the beginning and the end. We know that you're the Prince of Peace, God. We thank you for the word that he poured out today. God, we ask that you'll fill it back up, God. God, we ask that the word will fall on good ground and that it will not return void. Now, Father, as we close out this service, we thank you that you do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever ask for or imagine. So, God, when we walk out, we walk out saying thank you and hallelujah. For we know that you're worthy of the praise. Now, God, come on. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. And let all God's people say, Amen.